The pelviscopic hysterectomy is based on the principle of a transvaginal coring out of the cervical tissue. The technique demonstrated in this film is called CASH, Classic Abdominal ZEM Hysterectomy, whereby ZEM stands for Serrated Edged Macromorsulator. Here a tissue cylinder is cored out completely through to the uterine fundus. The instrument used is CURT, Calibrated Uterine Resection Tool. Next, the uterine cavity is measured with a sound, dilated to Hager 5, and then a 5 mm in diameter guide rod is introduced through the cervical canal, and with the assistance of an atraumatic grasping forceps, the uterus is perforated, thus forming a longitudinal tube of muscle. The perforation is blood-free and allows for mobilization of the uterus in all directions. This is permitted using the 50 centimeter long guide rod. As the first step, the new endoscopic needle blocker grasps the needle and a suture ligature from posterior to anterior in direction is put through the right parametrium. After removing the needle from the abdominal cavity, the extracorporeal knot is tied, reintroduced and pulled tight, thus ligating the round ligament, the fallopian tube and the suspensory ligament of the ovary. A surgical knot is set around the rotor knot for security. The broad ligament is now ligated for the second time proximal to the uterus in order to securely ligate the ascending branches of the uterine artery. The entire operative technique is based on the principles of classical surgery, using only scalpel, scissors, needles and suture material. Electrocoagulation and other forms of heat coagulation are not used. The now doubly ligated ligament is transected without blood loss and the parametrium opened. Security ligatures are now applied over both stumps. The procedure follows the classic principles of hysterectomy as performed at laparotomy. Here on the left side, once again, the ureter is located and a suture ligature is set in the an posterior anterior direction. This is important in order to prevent an accidental ligation of the ureter or large vessels. The knot, which has been tied extracorporeally, is now pushed into the abdomen with the plastic push rod and ligated. Here also the ligature is reinforced with a surgical intracorporeal endo knot. The material used here is catgut. However, other suture material may also be used.
suture ligature of the vessels proximal to the uterus, which are easily seen here, follows. The broad ligament is pierced going in the posterior-anterior direction. The knot is tied extracorporally, reintroduced, pulled tight, and transection is performed without bleeding until a wide opening in the broad ligament has been achieved. Once again, ligatures are applied to both stumps for absolute security, as is the case at classical laparotomy. The material used here is a monofilamentous, non-resorbable seraline, which glides easily and may be pulled taut particularly well. The uterus is manipulated into the required position by an assistant. Infiltration of the uterine cervix on either side with 10 milliliters of POR8 solution in a concentration of 0.05 international units per milliliter is now performed. The right side of the broad ligament is now opened further. The deep vessels and ureter are easily seen, but lie well out of danger. The posterior leaf of the broad ligament is now opened down to the level of the insertion of the uterosacral ligaments. The same procedure is performed on the left side. Here, further dissection of the anterior leaf. Now, aqua dissection with installation of 10 milliliters of POR8 solution on either side into the vesicouterine peritoneal fold. This step greatly simplifies the dissection which follows and allows this procedure to be performed without bleeding, as often is the case at laparotomy. Sometimes sharp transection of the insertion of the uterosacral ligaments is necessary. The remaining the psychouterine peritoneum may be, as at laparotomy, dissected off using a sponge stick, as shown here. The amount of blood loss is remarkable and may be attributed to the endoscopic approach itself. As in preventing the broad opening in the abdomen, the associated paralysis of the vessels and therefore bleeding tendency is also avoided. Both sides of the broad ligament may be dissected so far down that the uterine cervix may be ligated at the level of the endocervix. Prior to this step, however, the vesicouterine fold is suspended transabdominally using a two-needle suture set called the cash needle set. This set allows us later on in the operation to fix the peritoneum over the cervical stump in the area of the uterosacral ligaments. The suture material is put through the vesicouterine peritoneum and the needle is removed transabdominally. By pulling on the suture material from outside, the peritoneum is elevated as a classical laparotomy, and thus a broad view into the parametrion is possible. Now a rotor loop is set around the uterus to lie in the correct area for ligation, which is marked by the insertion of the uterosacral ligaments.
Coring out of the cervix is performed at this point. Here we see the sharp edge of the cutting tube at the uterine fundus. It is important that this procedure is complete so that the tissue cylinder may be easily removed. While removing the calibrated uterine resection tool, the hole created is closed by pulling taut the applied rotor loop sitting around the cervix. This should be performed as quickly as possible in order to prevent any danger such as a possible gas embolus which could theoretically happen as the uterine cavity has been cut, thus exposing open vessels. Three rotor loops are set in keeping with the principle of the triple loop ligation technique set forth by Zem in 1978 for endoscopic salpingo oophorectomy. Following this step, the claw forceps grasps the uterine fundus in the newly created hole and pulls it taut in the direction of the umbilicus. Using the hooked scissors, the uterus is transected distal to the three rotor loops. For security reasons, a chronic catgut rotor loop is set as catgut itself swells and therefore prevents slipping of the serraline ligatures. Therefore, any possible suture slippage in the area of the ascending branches of the uterine artery are avoided. In keeping with the classical technique, the right round ligament is sutured to the right side of the cervical stump and after extracorporeal knotting, the cervical stump is fixed and held in its proper place. Again, a security knot is tied. It is also technically possible to use the same thread and bring it out the other side of the cervix through the left round ligament and thereby use one suture to re-establish the cardinal ligament. In this case, two separate sutures are used. As the cardinal ligament is a major factor in maintaining the strength of the pelvic floor, this procedure is superlative in preventing a post-operative prolapse. This possibility, however, is not the case at total hysterectomy. The risk of developing carcinoma is prevented, as you will see later in this film, in that the entire transitional zone has been cored out. Sometimes the paracervical fascia remains. Now, the suture which has been holding the vesicouterine peritoneum is brought in and the needle from the cash set sutures the peritoneum to the uterosacral ligaments. Thereby, the peritoneum falls like a curtain down over the cervical stump and an ideal peritonealization is performed. Here, an intra-abdominal knot is performed in order to secure the new position of the vesico-uterine peritoneum. As retractors routinely used at laparotomy are absent, the entire topography is ideally reinstated. Once again, we see the cylinder of cervical tissue and then we morselate using the serrated edged macromorselator called ZEM for short. 
This instrument cuts the uterine tissue into thumb-sized cylinders, which pose no problems for the pathologist in establishing an exact histological diagnosis. The pelvis is then irrigated using three to five liters of physiological saline solution in order to remove any small remaining particles. The blood loss during this operation was under 50 milliliters. The cache technique employs scissors, sutures, and needles. Hemostasis using high frequency current or laser is obsolete. Finally, we see the microscopic sections of the cervical cylinder and transvaginal coagulation of the old ectocervix using the Portio coagulator. The operation time was 90 minutes.